Welcome to our uh, career panel. Uh, my name is Noel Sass. I'm a junior sport management major with a minor in psychology. Um, I'm the president of the sport management club and the student athlete advisory committee, as well as a member of the women's soccer and softball teams. Um, we're going to get started with Alex first. Um, I don't know if he can hear me, but we're going to try. All right, so do you just want to give us a brief introduction? strategic planning and monetization at these sports. Uh, thank you guys so much for having me here today. All right, uh, we'll start down here with Emily and then work our way down. My name is Emily Humphries and I, my name is Emily and I am the Partnerships, Partnerships and Development Associate for Soccer Without Borders. My name is Kathleen Yates um, and I am currently the uh, Director of Analytics for the Boston University Men's Ice Hockey Team. Uh, my name is Milton McCarthy. I know a lot of you guys already know me. I graduated two years ago. But I currently work with GAN Academy in Waltham as their strength and conditioning coach. Uh, my name is Elise McClear. I am the head of partnership development and marketing for the Boston Breakers. Yeah, my name is Mike Riley. I'm with 95 The Sports Hub and WBZ in Boston, Newbury College, graduate class 2006 here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so to start, we're just going to sort of rewind for you guys. Um, were you all sport management majors? And if not, what did you major in? And how did that sort of help you to pick this line of work? I was communications. Uh, I have no idea what I signed up, to be honest. <laughs> I have no clue. I heard the next person next, next to me say sports management. I heard the word sports, and I kind of got me into it. I was a double major in sport management and marketing while I was anywhere. I did the same thing. I was a dual major in sport management and economics. Uh, I was bio and physiology undergrad and engineering grad school, so very not sport management. <laughs> uh, I was sports management undergrad and then I did education with my postgrad. Can you guys just speak a, a little bit to how that sort of helped you find your way into the paths here and now, or uh, how it had no influence on that at all? Um, I know for me that I had always sort of gravitated towards the uh, like sciences and math and computer type stuff, but also you know have always been a sports person, play, loved playing and watching and have anything to do with it. So sort of figured that my best bet was you know, my best bet to you know be successful and help uh, help the team out was going to be sort of in the capacity of a team nerd of some kind. So uh, myself, I mean as former athlete, I just figure you know I, I need to find something where I where I need to transition my passion for soccer into the real world and then. That's kind of how I decided to figure out sports management was my, you know, my path, and then, you know, experiencing through internships and other jobs kind of helped me also along the way to evolve to where I am now. I uh, I hated math and I hated <laughs> science growing up in high school, and uh, I'm like, I don't want to do this the rest of my life, so I got to find my passion. I found uh, talking on the radio or doing something on TV. Um, and thankfully, I'm able to do that going to work every day doing something that I enjoy uh, where it doesn't feel like work every day and uh, able to excel here in Newbury to do that, uh, get the reps in and now able to do what I'm doing for a living on a daily basis. To be back off of that, I grew up wanting sports and numbers and you know, I just wanted to be something I was passionate about and kind of spread you know, whatever opportunities that were out there. I didn't even know my job existed until I actually applied for it. I think my marketing degree is what I use most, um, dealing with partnerships and our donors with Soccer Without Borders, but my sport management has also helped me. I have done internships with both the Breakers and the Revs, and then stayed on with the Revs after my internship uh, postgraduate. So I have used my sport degree and I've used my marketing degree. So Catherine, you talked a little bit about being one of the nerds in sports. Can you tell us a little bit about what hockey analytics is, just so that everybody has a general sense of sort of what you do? So I uh, work closely with the coaching staff and also the strength and conditioning staff. And we'll basically sort of go through video post game, um, help break down video, and uh, track and calculate certain stats that we keep, and come up with you know additional ways that we can evaluate and improve our player performance, and sort of figure out where we're at relative to each other, where we're at relative to other teams, and just uh, yeah, work uh, work with the coaching staff to help uh, help us sort of get an objective look at uh, where we're at and where we need to be improving. What sort of Jump started you guys or inspired you to work in the sport field? Like, what made you really want to go for that? 
once you got out of college or when you were going into college? Like, how did you decide what you wanted to do? Uh, myself, I know I had about three big moments in which I kind of already knew that's what I wanted to do. The first one being probably the most important one was my first coaching job. I had no clue what I was, you know, what I was going to get into. And they just kind of threw me up there and they figured I was pretty much babysitting because I was actually coaching toddlers. So they didn't even know how to run. And one of the big challenges was teaching them how to stand up, you know. So the big question that parents will always come up with is how do you do it? You know, what, how do you milk, uh, make them get up? And funny little project I came up with, just using plastic turtle shells, have them crawl with them, push them against the wall. Next thing you know, they're standing. You know, and babies don't even realize that. So at that moment, <laughs> I knew I, I, I wanted to work in, in sports field, helping either an athlete or someone that's a former athlete that wanted to be better or achieve something. And you know, having a baby go from crawling to get up, that's what's a, you know, one of those big moments that I consider this is what I want to do. Yeah, I think for me being um, an athlete in high school and college and after college as well. Uh, I just always wanted to work in the sports industry. Uh, I went through a couple different, um, you know, sports related fields. I did the sports marketing, I did coaching, um, and kind of fell into the sports admin side where kind of the back end stuff of all of the professional games. Um, I worked for the Revolution before the Breakers. Um, I kind of like to work in the back end and see everything develop in the back end and then go to the games and see everything come together. I kind of had a, an idea that I wanted to work um, in foundation work and nonprofit work of sport. I am um, a youth sports advocate, and that's during my time at Newbury. I did a lot of research on some of the undefined values of youth sport and getting into a further look of like how youth sport and youth sport done in the, the proper ways can teach respect, responsibility, and really help um, really the self efficacy of. Uh, child and so I kind of fell in love with that. I took a detour into ticketing with the England Revolution, um, but realized kind of quickly that wasn't for me. And then found work with Soccer Without Borders, which is a nonprofit. I would say, growing up, I knew I was going to be a career for all, but I always wanted to be involved where you know, to get an actor and a variety. You know, supported being in the industry, having a passion about what we do, and just, you know, work nine to five all day, you know, not like, I think it's one of those, people are so invested in it that you have to come in like a eager worker work day to day. That's something I love, people who come in as well, and they just have to do what they do. And I'm going to be happy to be the past Awesome. So we talk a lot here about making connections and like building on people you meet and things like that. So can you guys speak a little bit to the idea of how much of an impact having connections has made throughout your journey through your work in the sport world. Yeah, actually, um, you know, one of my former professors here um, in radio class, I still stay in touch with him. I actually talked to him the other day, uh, first time in a couple months. We chat uh, a few times throughout the year, and, um, you know, he put my demo together um, and he gave me a lot of advice uh, to. Be where I'm at today, and the, having to stay here in the market too, which we're pretty fortunate about having had to move out of Boston. Uh, I've been able to stay here and talk about all the teams in Patriots, Bruins, Celtics, Red Sox, everything. Um, so because of him, he's one of the guys right there. And then not just him, but also other people that he's that I was um, networked to through him, and by working with other people um, that I went to school with there. And, that they were able to intern with other other teams, maybe the Celtics, the Bruins, and again in front of them too, and so forth. So the connections that you make are especially, yeah, especially in the sense of why, matter why. And also, uh, I tell people all the time, all the time never, don't ever earn any burn any burn any any you never know who work, be working for that person. Um, yeah, just to kind of be back on that, it's it's going to be huge, guys. So definitely start you know making as many connections as possible. Networking is going to be that number one key you're gonna need whenever you get up there. Uh, I know myself. Even last night, I got the you know I got to experience it. I was working with a, uh, an actual collegiate athlete right now. She's in New York, and through her, I met her teammate, who was actually here in Boston, now working with Tufts University. 
And guess what? They in need of a strength and conditioning coach pretty soon. So right there at that moment, you know, hey, take my cart. Let me know if you guys have any help. I will go and shadow and see what I can do for you guys. And, you know, at the beginning, it might sound like it's free work, but you never know. You know, everyone, someone is watching you. Someone is paying attention to what you're doing. And next thing you know, the war is going to turn into a very, very small war, especially in this industry. Yeah, definitely just always sort of be ready to, like, be on and, like, expect, uh, expect that you are going to be making connections. Like, I know uh, our, uh, our head strength coach uh, in the offseason runs a gym down in Connecticut about 20 minutes from uh, my parents' house, and this past summer was having some logistical issues with the person who was going to do the sort of operations and business side for the summer. So I was like, you know, I'll, I'll live at home for the summer and help you out. And ended up, you know, through him, he works with a lot of NHL players and teams and GMs and that kind of thing. So even just, you know, had me doing projects on the side for him of, you know, can you put it, put together pro, uh, progress reports for some of the athletes and that kind of thing and had coaches come in and sort of got to deliver that to them even though you know it may look like I'm just the person sitting behind the desk doing the billing answering the phone whatever just sort of always be ready to promote yourself and put your work out there uh, because people are you know they're real people the people that you're going to be making connections with they come and pick their kid up from hockey practice and you know you gotta always sort of be ready to do that. I think it's a little weird for me to be sitting up here because two years ago, Elise took a chance on me and uh, hired me as an intern. Um, and back then, my internship with the Breakers kind of sparked my internship and employment with the New England Revolution. And soccer was something two years ago, three years ago, I don't think I would have been like, oh, I'm going to the soccer industry. Um, but here I am and I love it. So you be open to all doors and be open to anyone who's willing to give you a helping hand. Um, I got where I am at the Breakers because of the internship I did in college. Um, somebody that I didn't even work with that I knew from my internship that I kind of just, you know, talked to in the office um, was actually the general manager of the Breakers and when I was with the Revolution asked me to come over to the Breakers. Um, so knowing those connections is huge and just talking to everybody. That was just the fact that you know, became friends. So build those connections, you know, with your group now, the VP of XY company. You just, you know, be a good person. Yes, like, what do you Just speak a little bit to what your experience as a female working within the sport world has been. Hey. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, don't, I uh, you know, work with a men's team and a men's coaching staff and that kind of thing. But I think it uh, definitely is something that is a team culture that can be established and can, you know, you're not automatically going to be at a disadvantage. Um, we have our director of hockey operations is a woman. Our One of our student managers is a woman. We have a lot of, you know, we have a lot of female involvement in our team and in the administration of our team. And it has sort of, you know, maybe initially at the beginning there was a little bit of pushback, but in the time that I've, you know, been around, there has never been any sort of, you know, maybe from other teams that aren't as accustomed to having women around, we've gotten a little bit of, a little bit of crap from them. But, you know, within our own team, the guys are super respectful, the coaches are super respectful. So I think that that definitely is something that if you are committed to sort of sticking with it and, you know, making it clear, like, hey, I'm here because I'm really good at what I do, like they would have, you know, if there was a guy who was going to do this as well, they would have hired him. So like, you know, just sort of establish, like, I'm here for a reason, and you know that can definitely that team culture can can be established if it isn't already there. Yeah, I actually get this question a lot, and it's not. I don't think it's a huge thing for women versus men in sports. Um, I think it's just you know any way you can get your foot in the door, um, whether it be you know just doing a, a non-paid internship like Emily did, or um, you know anything that you can do to get your foot in the door and you know establish that relationship and build trust with people and having them realize that you can do this job the same as a man could, um, it's huge. Yeah, yeah, they said a great, um, just build trust and be professional at all times and just don't, just always be professional. Um, we're going to jump, jump over to, to our alums now. Uh, uh, you guys speak a little bit to how your education has been very helpful to the succeed in the sport industry. I'm going to talk a little bit with connections, but just from our education side. side. All right, um, myself, uh, I mean, it, Probably the first two years, I didn't think it was going to, you know, guide me as much as it does now. But then once I started to realize, you know, what I've seen in the real world is actually what I saw in the classroom or what I hear from teachers, it started to make everything easier. I mean, I even still keep my notes from class because, you know, you never know. Uh, and what I do, I'm always doing research to, you know, either help an athlete be better or help them recover from an injury. And, you know, being able to plan things out, keep a nice calendar and a schedule 
it's huge and i'm pretty sure a lot of your professors talk to you guys about that time management you know and i think one of the big big things i got from the all the education i got from newberry was to be able to actually time uh, manage my time very well and again all the way till today i i've been doing way much better <laughs> i probably was in the position you guys a lot of you guys are in right now where you guys kind of like scatter all over the place but you know once you start getting your priorities better and all that kind of stuff the education that you get from here, especially in the sports management program, is going to be—it's going to come in really handy. Don't throw away any notes that you're taking. Always keep in safe books, all that kind of stuff. It's going to—it's going to help you at some point later on when you uh, become a professional. Yeah, and you know, touch on that too. I mean, this day and age now, you guys all know this, but it's pretty crucial uh, for any job to have a degree of some sort, and uh, you know. I, I was not an A and B student. I fully admit that I was like a C, maybe a B minus was awesome. I was happy as a flame with that. Um, you know, that was like an A achievement for me, but just the fact that you get your degree is huge. And to, from a great institution right here, Newbury College, that says a lot too. You are able to have that on your resume. Um, but like, you know, what this guy was saying too, with the books and everything, I still hold on to, uh, my public speaking book too, because I still do some um, side work as uh, auctioneer, Rick Flair, uh, you know, emceeing for events, and I look back on stuff like that. I'll, I'll look back on some notes, um, just with things like how to host a show or how to um, do some editing and so forth. Just the, the format of a specific talk show, as because of the experience I got here at Newbury. So utilize that today on a daily basis and um, the clock and broadcasting, I learned it here, I still have that original one, like the actual clock and, and so forth, the uh, morning time, six to 10, midday, 10 to two, all that. When the uh, air commercials, what to do with specific things to, to say and when to say it, all because I got it right here at Newburgh. I think my biggest takeaway from academics, but also athletics is just be ready for anything. Um, there was a time that Newberry didn't have fields, and so when you were gearing up for practice that morning, you had everything from pants, sneakers, cleats, shoes, like everything in your bag, um, just because you didn't know what practice was gonna be that afternoon. Um, and transferring that over to athletic, to academics, is the conversation in the classroom doesn't stop because you didn't do finish your reading, because you didn't do the reading that night. Um, so just be ready for anything, be open to anything. And I think like every day, uh, our co-founder will send me, you know, three different links or notes or something that she was thinking of and whether I've researched them or not, like I need to present to her that afternoon. Um, so it's something, just be ready for anything and be open to doing anything at any moment. Can you just uh, tell us a little bit about what exactly monetization is? We're looking to you know, kind of maximize how much money we can make off of commercial. Um, the big thing I was charged with when I first started was creating a model for the NFL sales all the way through the Super Bowl. And, you know, like I said, I came from a background of life and numbers, and my other major was economics. So, you know, I kind of put all that together into this role. A lot of it was supply and demand. So, like, uh, I can tell you that New England Falcons team. That's a very good line of man for that game. So it's part of a little bit more if we want to. Um, and you know, just looking at that, like we're in a little bit of all across our portfolio. Um, Elise, can you tell us some of the challenges that you face marketing one of the smaller teams um, in such a big sports city like Boston? Yes, there's a lot of challenges. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, the fact that we are a small organization, don't have a ton of money like the Red Sox or the Celtics or the Patriots. Um, so our marketing is, we have to be more creative. Um, so we don't have, you know, the money to put up a huge billboard or be on TV or anything like that. So we kind of have to go about the marketing a little bit differently. Um, you know, we, we do our social media and our newsletter marketing, um, but you know, that only is attractive to the people that are following us or that, you know, get our emails. So we kind of have to think about a way to reach out to people that don't follow us and kind of get our brand out there. Um, so it's it's very challenging to kind of compete with those other sports. Um, I think, you know, having the low price points and, you know, kind of getting around it that way is, is kind of how we go about it. And, doing marketing that maybe other teams don't do. Um, we do a lot of, you know, face-to-face -face and door-to-door -door and going to events and kind of doing it our own way so that we can kind of get our face out there. 
Milton, oh. can you uh, right. <laughs> can you tell us what it's like balancing um, between like multiple sports, making sure people are conditioned, just so how you sort of go through a yeah, I mean that's that's probably the biggest challenge I see every single day. I I mean I went from being a soccer player myself and not knowing how all the other sports pretty much work to learn everything. Well, not everything, but you know mostly the most important things on every single one now. And to me, again, it's it's a big challenge every day. Uh, it's tons of research, so every single person is a different uh, you know map that you have to build and just put it all together and yeah honestly it's 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 challenging you know you really have to uh, be able to get around it balance what you consider work life with what you're dealing with which is you know making sure that what really takes for every single person individual what's going to work for them and that's it takes a lot of research so now that we've heard a little bit about what you all do now can you Tell us about what your first job was in sport and how you sort of advanced from there, if you remember or want to go there. <laughs> so my internship was with um, Mass Premier Soccer, which is now Global Premier Soccer. Um, I was in the marketing department, but I did a lot of spreadsheets and research and, and stuff like that. Um, like I said, it got me to where I am today by the connections, but it's not something that you know, you kind of pride yourself on. It was a lot of, you know, doing spreadsheets and Excel spreadsheets and different stuff like that. So it wasn't too much fun. Um, I did coaching along with office work. I made sure that the internship side I was doing it, they, they understood that I wanted to experience both. So I made sure that I was also not just getting coaching hours, but also administrative hours. And I did a lot of tests too that were not fun, but you know, now they come in handy, you know. Um, I worked for a sporting goods company, uh, like a smaller uh, mom and pop type of one, helping them update their client database and uh, manage orders for custom equipment. Um, so mine was the internship with the breakers, and I think setting up pitch side seating is like the one thing I do not like doing, and then I had to do it again when I interned with the Reds. Um, yeah. <laughs> I started uh, actually doing public address announcing in high school, and I did it here at Newbury College uh, for basketball and volleyball, a little bit of soccer too. Um, that was really cool to do it at the uh, NCAA level. I did that for a few years after that. Um, you know, still do it sporadically every now and then. Um, but uh, you know, I did some semi-pro baseball and even the Red Sox single A farm team, a little spinners at one point, just on the side. But my first internship, though, was um, actually our competing station for sports radio, where I'm at now. Uh, where I'm at the sports hub at WBZ, but the competing one, WEI, I started interning there. And um, I really wanted to get a job, uh, more or less, with the production side. So they weren't offering anything, so I'm like, I'll do anything, like, literally anything. So I took a, I think the minimum wage at the time was like, seven dollars and 25 cents to be on the street team um, which is promotions and i was like took it in a heartbeat and it was like right before i graduated here and um did that for a few years on the side a little part-time gig and it just opened up a lot of doors to connections to people i still talk to today my former boss is now the marketing director for the san diego padres um, my, uh, one of the other bosses I have is the marketing director for the Miami Dolphins. Um, and another one is one of my bosses now at the Sports Hub. So I've stayed in touch with all those guys and I was able to work with my current boss at our former station there, just like that in the promotions department. So connections are huge in that sense there and that's where it all started pretty much. Yeah, I got my first internship with the Red Bull as a soccer team. Uh, and more experiential marketing, so going to you know different deals and promoting the team and trying to help the ticket sales. But you know, what I really pushed them to do was kind of let me create a database of that I like working with numbers and let me chronicle it, create notes, and you know it allowed us to better deal with the market, you know, different areas that we could work in, and you know, just kind of give myself as valuable as I could to that team. So my internship was with um, Mass Premier Soccer, which is now Global Premier Soccer. Um, I 
was in the marketing department, but I did a lot of spreadsheets and research and stuff like that. Um, so like I said, it got me to where I am today by the connections, but it's not something that you know you kind of pride yourself on. It was a lot of you know doing spreadsheets and Excel spreadsheets and different stuff like that. So it wasn't too much fun. So at this time, we're gonna break up and uh, let the panel sort of mingle with you guys. So we can all just sort of, you guys can feel free to jump around, um, find tables to sit at, and feel free to come up and ask them any of the questions that you'd like to uh, once they get off the stage. I would, I would definitely work uh, in the NHL at some point if, uh, if the opportunity came along, but I like where I'm at now. How different is it uh, when you guys play in BC? Is there a different uh, atmosphere to your work environment? or? It's a little different. Uh, <laughs> the BC game is always fun. Uh, it's been it's been different the past few years because they've sort of been on a little bit of a downward and we've been thankfully on a little bit of an upward, so it hasn't been as contentious. But uh, maybe two years ago in the bean pot, we had a really epic goalie duel, which is like my favorite type of game. I love it. Stresses me out to no end, but I love just like a really good. Uh, really good goal game, um, but it's fun being part of the environment. Uh, sometime when we're over there, it's a little less fun than when they come to us, but. <laughs> Working with the refs, did you do that after you came back from England? Yeah. Directly? Um, what was that actually like doing the chicken It was, um, it was challenging when I first started because I had never really done much sales, sales before, um, so it was kind of a learning process and and that's kind of what um, you start off on, is just kind of learning and, and getting the process down. Um, it was a lot of phone calls, so we had to make about, during the season it was 60 calls a day, and then off season it was 100 calls a day, um, and then kind of going to meetings and meeting with like different, I worked specifically with youth soccer um, in the south region, so I was in charge of all of the soccer organizations in that south region um, of Massachusetts. Um, so reaching out to all of the youth soccer presidents and trying to get um, their teams out to the games and then, you know, in the long run getting them to sign up for like a youth soccer partnership. Um, so it was, it was a grind, <laughs> um, but it, it, I think it, it paid off. There's a lot of pressure when you're on the line. They will let you know, too. People will let you know. Oh, yeah. oh, sure. oh you get it all the yeah. time. You ever hear of oh, Twitter trolls? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, they're brutal. <laughs> they're brutal. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me you're one of them. No. Not good. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, like, um, on a day, a lot of things happen in the sport world. Yep. Major like, cases or even games. How do you, like, how do you guys select what would go first in that day when it comes to talking? Um, like, if it's a big day, like, different sports are going on, playoff games. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, well, it's the first, obviously, with the great force. Exactly, unless it's like a major, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Boston would get first, and you know, it's just kind of like, wherever the wherever the wind is blowing, wherever people feel like they're talking, like, right, so for today, um, we'd be talking, what's today, Thursday, so, there's any football, been, maybe? I mean, yeah, maybe, kind of, I mean, maybe talking about what the pass can do. Kind of. Well, yeah, we're, we're getting close to Sunday, so, yeah, we'll talk about that. Who's going to be healthy? Will Gronk play? Yeah. Last night, the Red Sox, too. Uh, Chris Sale had... Uh, 13 k has got the Pedro Martinez. Yep. This guy knows his stuff. I like him. Yeah. So, you yeah. Guys, uh, I saw your tweet on that this morning. You saw my tweet? Yeah, I looked it up. Good man. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good. Something with your internships, like, it's okay if you don't like them. I think finding out like what you don't like is just as important as finding like out what you do like. Yep. And there's so many different avenues in sport to sit here right now or even like for myself and yourself like at 18 to be like this is what I'm going to do, this is what I want to do. I was a softball player. I was not a soccer player. Um, but now I'm in the soccer industry and I wouldn't change it. So I fell in love with that through my internships. So you see, you never know what you're going to end up doing. I mean. I, one of the biggest projects that I've probably done was put together a flag football clinic. I was like, I don't even know what football really is back then, it was like, you know, but I started learning. And it turned out to be so simple that, you know, I got it done. But that's what, you know, Emily's saying, you just got to be ready for it's coming to you and don't be afraid of changes. You know, it's going to happen. They're going to be there, just make sure you're ready to evolve and turn into something better. You know? And don't be afraid of making mistakes either. You know, they're going to happen. 
better for you to take risks than not take that risk and not learn anything.